Hi guys, welcome to the archive. So, in the last three videos I showed you how to make a modular temple, the call walls and battlements of the system, and the towers, along with the removable modular doors, trapdoors, and secret doors that work with them. In this video I'll be showing you how I made the gate and its replaceable door, and in the next video I'll be showing you how to make the accessories that you can use with it and the walls, like torches, banners, and a blood-stained gibbet. Like I've said before, you can make these in any order, and you can even go back and make more to expand your possibilities later. Most of this stuff can be used separately too. The tiles and stairs can be used as part of a dungeon build, and so on and so on. As I've mentioned, this project is designed to be as simple or as complex as you want to make it. You can make as much or as little of it as you want. If you haven't seen it already, there's also a video I made earlier in this playlist where I go through all the different ways you can use the terrain from these videos, including some scenario ideas, so let me know if you found that useful in any way, and I'll make more of them in the future. The gatehouse itself can be used with or without battlements. Without them, it works perfectly with the modular temple from earlier in this series. To get started making it, you'll just need a few pieces of XPS foam, including one 6 inch by 3 inch by 1 inch piece for the roof, one 6 inch by 3 inch by an eighth of an inch piece for the floor, two 3 inch by 3 inch by 1 inch pieces for the outer walls, two 3 inch by 3 inch by half an inch pieces for the inner walls, and four 3 inch by 1 inch by half an inch pieces to cut the arch from. You can actually combine these into one piece that is 3 inches by 4 inches if you're using a hot wire, but that's much harder to cut with a knife. You'll also need some 1 quarter inch by 16th of an inch balsa wood strips or some craft lollipop sticks cut down to a quarter of an inch in width. These are cheaper, but they are harder to cut and work with, believe me, I've tried. You'll also need some 2 millimeter or 1 16th of an inch round wooden dowel, um, depending on which measurement you use, and some cereal card. To start off, we need to cut a 1 inch grid an eighth of an inch deep across all sides of the roof. Then we just cut strips from the edges, bevel the lines with a ballpoint pen, draw some cracks in some random tiles, and texture it using tin foil. It's a good idea to go back and bevel the edges and deepen the cracks again after texturing to make sure that they stand out. If you want to know more about this technique, check out the temple video. Then we follow the same procedure for the outer walls. You don't need to cut into the inner side, but make sure that you still bevel or cut those edges to round them off. We then do the same texturing for the inner piece, except instead of a 1 inch grid, cut a 1 inch brick pattern into the inner side and edges. Once complete, we just need to glue it to the outer piece and bevel the connecting line. This is a good time to puncture the slots on the inner wall for holding torches and other accessories. Grab a cocktail stick and at a 45 degree angle, push a half inch deep hole into the gap here above the second brick up and in the center of the wall. At this point, we need to cut the archway. As a little thank you, I've put together a template for my Patreon supporters, though it is absolutely perfectly possible to freehand cut this after drawing it on, which is what I did for the prototype. If you use the template, be careful not to push up against it, as this can bend the wire and the end result. Alternatively, you can use the template to draw the shape and then freehand the cut, which is what I did. Little bumps just blend into the texturing unless you make a really big wibble. The arch starts 1 16th of an inch in from the edge of either side, and branches up to about an eighth of an inch away from the edge of the top. Once you've cut those arch pieces, 
you just need to draw a small quarter inch brick arch on the front and back piece, as I've shown here. Cut and texture it with tin foil, as we've done with all the other stone. You can also cut a brick pattern into the underside of the arch and texture it at this point. Once you've got this done, now is a good time to make the door because we can use the arch as a template for the top of the door. You want the basic structure of each gate to be just under one and a half inches wide as the door needs a little bit of space to allow it to open. There are two kinds of door you can make, one thin, which was my prototype, and one thick, which was my final version. I've included a guide for both so you can pick the one that you like best. I made each door about an eighth of an inch less wide than one and a half inches. Using quarter inch strips, this means six planks with one plank trimmed by an eighth of an inch. If you find your doors don't quite fit at the end, you can easily trim thin strips from the center of each without throwing anything off. The first step as usual is to take your strips or sticks and trim strips from the edges to give the effect of worn wood. If you do this on both sides of the plank, if you're making a thin door, it doesn't matter so much for the thick door as one side of the plank will be covered by, well, more planks. You'll then just need to glue them together using tacky glue. It's a good idea to keep the thinner piece, the one you trimmed by an eighth of an inch, um, next to the outside edge of where the door will be. So the smallest edge that will line up against the side of the frame. We'll then need to draw out the shape of the arch at the top using the arch as a template and trim it to fit using a knife. You'll also want to cut a chunk a quarter of an inch wide by an eighth of an inch high from the bottom corner of each door to allow for the dowel axle mechanism. Once that's done, you can decide if you prefer the thick door or the thin door. If you want to make the thick door, skip this step and jump to the instructions for the thicker door. If you prefer the thin door, to complete it, take four pieces of one and three eighths of an inch long strips and glue them in place on one side as the bracing pieces, as I did here on this prototype door. I glued them in place with a gap of about an eighth of an inch on the side to fit the round dowel in. I also trimmed the excess strips at the top to match the arch shape. Then just glue the round dowel in and make sure it's lined up straight. Finally, add the door handle as I show you how to do in the modular tower video linked below. You'll find it in the bit talking about the doors. Surprise, surprise. For the thick door, I added in extra bracing pieces, one and a quarter inch in length all the way up to the top. This leaves a nice gap on the inside edge to fit the round dowel into. I then trimmed them to match the arch shape and glued in the dowel. You can trim the dowel down a bit at the back with a knife until it's smooth with the rest of the gate, but it isn't crucial. You can just put in the next planks over the top. I then added a back to the door made in just the same way as the front really, which was also trimmed to the arch shape using the first part of the door to draw a guide and then cleaned up once I'd glued it in place. Finally, I cut out some bracing from serial card. This step I completed after painting the door as it makes it easier to dry brush the door. These are just 3 16th of an inch strips cut out to the width of the door from serial card with little indents drilled in every quarter of an inch using a pin vise. To find out more about this technique, check out the guide in the modular tower video on door hinges for more on how to make them as they're essentially the same process. If you wanted, you could add these to the front of the thin door. Whichever way you ended up choosing, use the door handle technique from the modular tower video that I've linked below. The door is also painted the same as the modular doors in that video, though I'd hold off on that until you've made sure that the door fits into the arch smoothly in case you need to trim some off. When you're done with the door, Hot glue the outer walls in place to the roof and hot glue the center arch in place beneath. Mm -hmm. 
make sure your accessory slots in the inner walls get glued in the right way around. You'll also want to puncture two one inch deep holes at a 45 degree angle with a cocktail stick at the top right hand corner of the lowest block on each side like this. Doing this on both sides will enable you to use all of the accessories on all sides of the gate. Now is also a good time to make sure that the joining edge of the inner and outer wall definitely looks beveled and if not just touch it up with a ballpoint pen. Once that's done it's time to fit the gate. You want to make an axle joint with two one inch wood strip pieces. Drill a hole in one and widen it with a knife until a round dowel will fit in. I say drill, applying some mild force with a cocktail stick will probably have the same effect if you're using balsa wood and not craft sticks. Then you just need to glue the undrilled piece beneath it to give it a base and cut the corners off the edges. Paint these pieces much as we did the door. Then we need to puncture the dowel holes in the foam. You want them about a sixteenth of an inch from the edge of the wall and in the centre of the rearmost ceiling brick. Make sure the door is straight and can open. The gate will need more space to open if you're making it thicker so bear that in mind. I put the door at the back for both thematic purposes and also because historically they often were to allow for nasty things like murder holes to pour boiling oil or water on top of bunched up invaders. So kind of realistic too. Now that you've got your dowel holes at the top of the gate, you can line up those dowel axle pieces at the bottom with the straight door above them and draw in lines on the foam at the bottom of the gate. You can then cut these in using an X-Acto knife and trim away the interior at an angle like this until the axle slots neatly inside. A smaller hole here is actually better than a bigger one as it will hold the piece in place without you needing to glue it. XPS foam is kind of useful like that. This will allow you to remove the gate at any point and make alternative gates for different purposes. I have a few in mind personally, so let me know in the comments if you'd like to see a video with me making them. Once in place, you may find that you need to trim some of the back of the arch to allow it to open and close more easily. This is fine and good to get done at this stage before you start painting the stone. Speaking of which, paint the stone. You can now paint all of the gatehouse and the thin floor piece using the painting stone tutorial that I'll have linked at the bottom of this video. Finally, the one eighth of an inch thick piece is the bottom floor, which is removable and also optional if you wanted to have a dirt path into your settlement, but it's good to have in case you wanted to use the gateway on the temple framework. To make it, just mark the grid into it using a knife and ballpoint pen. Be careful not to cut too deeply, there really isn't much leeway here. You want the block pattern to mirror the bottom of the gateway, so the second block from the edge on each side you'll want to be a half inch in width. Then texture it using tin foil, and don't forget the sides, because I almost did. If you find that it clips with the gate door, trim a small amount from the bottom of the door to allow it to move smoothly. Once you're done, you can assemble your gateway with fully functional gates and accessory slots. As always, I hope this was useful to you guys and that you get a lot out of this gate. If so, maybe hit subscribe and hit the bell too if you want to make sure that you see future tutorial videos. Do you have an idea to make this build better? I always love to hear extra ideas because it helps me make something better in the future. That's all from me for now. Until next time, I'll be in the archive.